You're watching Gears, brought to you by LMC Truck. You know, one thing that makes the hot rod world so unique is that it's so diverse. I mean, you've got muscle cars out there. You've got sports cars. You've got four by fours and off-road vehicles. You've got hot rods. You've got street rods. I mean, you've got a lot of stuff going on. But one of the most unique things that's happening in the hot rod world is what we call the vintage car or the nostalgia rod. Now, this is where you take a vehicle and you build it up to match a certain era or attitude. And sometimes the rougher, the better. But to pull off this kind of buildup, well, first of all, the car has got to be functional because you got to drive it. Second of all, it's got to be fairly accurate. And a prime example of that is this old Dodge pickup. The owner, John Clark, wanted to build a truck that looked like an early 60s shop truck. So he found this old Dodge that had been sitting in a field for about 30 years, and he had the Cherry Bomb logos painted and weathered on it so they looked as old as the rest of the vehicle. As you can see, it looks great. Now, since one of the best things about owning a rig like this is being able to take it out and drive it, well, John knew that he was going to have to do some modern upgrades like an engine and brakes and things like that to make this thing safe and reliable. And that's where the project started to go in a little different direction because John works at Mopar Performance. And in a moment of hot rod insanity, he stuffed a massive 528 Hemi and a Viper six speed into that old engine bay. <laughs> that's awesome. If that wasn't enough, he then shipped it off to the guys at Cherry Bomb, where they handcrafted a fully functional set of Zumi pipes that utilizes their new bullet glass pack mufflers that have huge four inch inlets and outlets. <laughs> the whole system was designed to shake and rumble and rattle like a top fueler pulling up to the line. Unfortunately, those last two modifications caused some serious problems with the truck. I mean, first of all, the look of the vehicle's got to change a little bit. I mean, now it needs to look more like an early 60s drag or competition vehicle to match that engine and those big pipes blowing out the side. I mean, no shop truck had functional zoomy sticking out the side. The other problem is in the rear end. I mean, those stock leaf springs are gonna wrap and give us wheel hop like crazy when we jump on the throttle. And of course, the reason you build an early competition style vehicle is so you can jump on the throttle. Fortunately, both of these problems are easy to fix. That's what we're gonna show you. Okay, the first thing we need to do is get the bed out of the way. And with a project like this, a good penetrating lube is gonna be your best friend. And there it is, in all of its vintage glory. Now, as you can see, John has already fit disc brakes and a limited slip differential to this rear end. So that's all good. The problem is in those leaf springs. Now, I know some of you guys are going, well, heck, that's easy. Just cut all that junk off of there, stick on a four link and coilovers and be done with it. Well, that would do it. And we've showed you how to do that in the past. The problem is that's expensive and it's major surgery to refit a rear end like that. Not everybody can do it, and not everybody has the tools to do it. Now, this gets even more tricky because John wants to keep those leaf springs to keep this vintage look. So, putting a four link on with leaf springs, obviously that doesn't work because the four link came along later. So did the traction bar that goes down underneath. However, a ladder bar system, now that fits the era because guys were using it back then, It'll solve the problem. It'll allow this thing to hook up like a mother. But the question is, how do you have ladder bars and leaf springs work together and not bind up? That's what we're going to show you. All right. One of the characteristics of a leaf spring is that it gets longer as it compresses. That's what that shackle is for, to allow that spring to move a little bit. Now, that also means that right here in the middle, where the axle is, that's also going to move back and forth a little bit as the suspension cycles. Now, with a link suspension, that mounts right to the rear end, allows the rear end to move up and down, but does not allow any forward and back movement at all. So, if you've got some sort of a traction bar, a trailing arm, four link, whatever, 
and you're also using leaf springs, and there's no way for those bars to move back and forward a little bit, well, your suspension's binding up, it's not working right. That is not a good thing. Now, another thing with leaf springs, like we said, is called axle wrap or wheel hop. Now, that's when you stomp on the gas, the rear end wants to rotate up and bend this spring upward into almost an S shape. Now, as you can see, somebody has put extra clamps on here to try to hold these spring packs together to keep that from happening. But, as you can tell, it's not working. Fortunately, the solution to all these problems is sitting right over there. Come on. Okay, what we've got here are three different universal kits that we got from Summit Racing because nobody makes anything specific for a 64 Dodge pickup. Now, here's what you're looking at. You got a couple of heavy duty ladder bars made by Competition Engineering. As you can see, they're fully adjustable, so you can adjust the pinion angle and the preload. Then, of course, you got the mounting brackets and the hardware to put those in. Then we have this universal cross member and all the brackets. And this is what's going to mount the front of those ladder bars. Then the last piece is this really cool floating housing kit. This is what's going to keep our leaf springs from binding up on us. Now, the magic about using universal kits is that you can make this stuff fit just about anything you're working on, no matter how crazy it is. And that's what this show's all about. Hey, we are back. And today we are dealing with some rear suspension geometry because we have this really cool vintage looking cherry bomb shop truck that somebody has rammed a 528 crate Hemi and a Viper six speed down its throat. Now, the problem is that rear suspension is not gonna be able to handle that power and get that power down to the road. A very common problem when somebody sticks a big engine in their project. So today we are in the process of sticking a ladder bar system on here and you are just in time to see how it all goes together. So let's get to it. Okay, the first thing that you need to do is pre-fit your bars so you know what kind of clearance issues you're gonna have. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I can see right now we have an issue here with the bottom of this cross member. Now the top is all right, so we'll keep that. But we're gonna have to get rid of this bottom part. Also, back here in the back, you can see we're going to have to reroute all these brake lines, but that is not bad. The first thing we'll do is grind off the rivet heads. Then just punch out the rivets with an air hammer. Finally, we'll just cut off the bottom brace with a sawzall. With everything out of the way, we can really start fitting these bars. Now, if you are building a hardcore drag race only vehicle, ideally you want this bottom bar to be parallel with the ground. That's going to give you the weight transfer that you want for those hard launches. However, with a street machine that may make a pass every once in a while, that's not near as important. And that's a good thing, because as you can see, I don't have a lot of options up here with these pipes in the way. Now, the rear bracket is another issue. Generally, it mounts like this. As you can see, you get a lot of push off of this bottom bar, but sometimes you don't have the room to do that, so you need to invert the mounting bracket. Now, once again, if you're building a hardcore drag racing machine, you probably don't want to mount it like this because you're not getting near as much push off this bottom bar. You're not going to get the weight transfer and the hard launch that you want. But for a street machine, this is perfect because it's not only going to take care of our axle wrap problem, it's still gonna plant that rear end harder than anything out there on the street. To fit the bars in place, you want them as far outward as possible for the most control. And of course, they need to be square with each other. You're gonna have all kinds of problems. And once you have them where you want them, just tack them in place. Now, we are ready for the cross member. And the first thing that you have to do is trim it down to fit your frame rails.
With that done, we are ready for these front brackets. Now at this point, they just slide right onto the cross member. Next, we'll just tap it in place and bolt the brackets to the ladder bars. Now, one of the cool things about using a kit like this is you've got all kinds of options. I mean, look at this. The cross member's got a nice arch to it. You can mount it down below the drive shaft, use it as a drive shaft hoop. You can tilt it back, you can stand it up, you can use it to mount brackets and hangers for the exhaust system, <laughs> whatever you want to do. You can literally custom fabricate this to fit whatever you're working on. Now, once you've got it how you want it, tack weld it in place, then make one final check, make sure everything's straight, nothing's out of whack, nothing's crooked, and then do your final welding, which is what we are going to do right now. Hey, you're watching Gears, and today's project is all about traction. Now, if you're just seeing this hot rod truck for the first time, well, I'm sure that these old zoomy pipes sticking out the side probably caught your eye. The fact that there's over 600 horsepower blowing through them, well, that just makes this cooler and cooler. The problem is that kind of power does not get to the ground by accident. No, you have got to have a system that'll handle it. That's what we're doing today. We are building a custom ladder bar suspension to help this thing launch the way it should. Now, we already have the cross member in place. Ladder bars are in. What about the rear end? Well, that is right over here. Now, as you can see, the axle is pretty much ready to go. I've got the brackets in place that hold the ladder bars, and they are all finished welded, so that is happening. Now, just in case you're wondering how strong this is, take a look at this. Not only do you have a weld that goes all the way around the axle tube on both sides, it's also fully boxed across the back and underneath. These are incredibly strong, able to handle all kinds of serious abuse, which is going to be a good thing. All right, at this point we are ready to do something about the leaf springs because we don't want the suspension binding on us when we hit a bump. That means these spring perches have got to come off after you make some measurements so you know where the spring is going to sit in correlation to the end of the axle. All right, this is one area where having the right tool will save you all kinds of headaches. And the right tool for cutting these suckers off is a plasma cutter. They cut so precisely, they'll allow you to follow all these tight contours and bends. This would be very tough to do with a sawzall or a cutoff wheel. Okay, once you have the axle all ground down and looking good, it's time to mount that floating housing to this leaf spring. Now, the first thing that'll go on is a slotted bracket, and it goes right over the center bolt. Then we'll take this other bracket that's got the rollers, and it mounts beneath the leaf spring. Of course, it's held in place with these spacers and this hardware. Now, at this point, you can see how this bracket floats on the leaf spring. Take a look. This allows the spring to move, and not get in a bind with the ladder bar, which is now going to be holding the axle in place, not the leaf spring. So, no more U-bolts. <laughs> Next, we'll roll the axle into place and center it up. This is where you're going to be really happy you made those measurements. Now, I know you're probably wondering, what keeps this axle from moving side to side if it's just floating in there? Well, that's what these metal slugs are for. Now, these weld to the bottom of the axle, and then this cage unit goes around them as it's bolted in to the housing, making it impossible for the axle to move side to side. Very simple, very effective. Once the stubs are welded in place, all you got to do is bolt on the cages, 
And that is it. Now take a look at what we got here. We got a complete ladder bar system that's holding the rear end in place, eliminating axle wrap, and planting the rear tires to the ground. All things that the lowly leaf spring was trying to do all by itself. Now the leaf spring is just acting as a spring. And we're gonna show you how well the system works here in just a little bit. But first, I gotta show you the wheels and tires that's going on this thing. Come on. Now obviously, we need something that matches the look and the era of what we're building. And nothing does that like a set of Raider wheels. For example, this set of Raiders here are the same style that George Barris put on the Munster coach. These wheels, on the other hand, are the Raider single ribs, which just happen to be the same wheels that George Barris put on the Batmobile. Yeah, except these have the cast center and the polished rim for a more competition look. That fits more what we're doing. Now, to finish this off, we also got these bullet caps. Yeah, look at that. Now, the size is 15 by 10, and the tire is this 10-inch wide Raider Slick. Now, I know some of you guys are saying, wait a minute, you can't run slicks on the street. Yes, you can, because these have the little rain grooves that technically make them street legal. <laughs> yeah, all right. Now, for the fronts, obviously, we needed a set of Raiders for the fronts. Then we needed something to match the white wall. So we went to Coker Tire, because they make white walls and classic tires for just about anything you can imagine. So all we have to do now is get these on the truck. You know, when you're building a vintage hot rod, it's really important that you keep everything looking right if you're gonna pull it off. For example, this pistol grip shifter. This would look great in a 70 Cuda or Roadrunner or something like that, not in an early 60s drag machine. Besides that, it's all broken up, so this needs to go. Now the replacement for this comes in these new shifter handles that Low Car's got out. Now this is a 16 inch tall double bend They've got them obviously shorter and with different bends, so you can really custom fit these into your application. Of course, they've got them to fit all your modern five and six speed transmissions too. Now we're gonna top that with this eight ball shifter knob. And that, as you can see, is gonna give us a really cool Rat Fink style shifter, which is exactly what this truck needs. Out on the road, the change in the rear suspension is virtually unnoticeable, as the leaf springs do the job that they were intended to do. But you have a definite improvement in the handling and the stability of the truck at speed. However, when you uncork that big Hemi and dump the clutch, things are a lot different as those ladder bars do exactly what they're supposed to do. Eliminate axle wrap and try to get all that power to the ground. Of course, the look of the wheels, the width of the tires, the attitude of the shifter, and the rumble of the exhaust make this one of the coolest, nastiest, most in-your-face rods on the road. Of course, it's not just for looks. It also has some very legitimate uses, too. So, just what is people's reaction to a vehicle like this? Well, let's just say that everywhere we went, it brought a huge response. Just relax. Let it drop. Just, just let it relax. That just makes it one more successful day of disturbing the peace. And now, what are you working on? For today's What Are You Working On, we are featuring a 16-year-old junior 
from Brownsburg High School in Brownsburg, Indiana, and his name is Aaron Dixon, and his car is a 1966 Chevy Corvair Monza. Take a look, here's a shot of Aaron and his car. <laughs> Man, they are ready to go. Now, Aaron said he got the car out of Michigan. You can imagine what the body was like. According to Aaron, he says the body was in pretty sour condition. <laughs> I never to call that, that's great. The floors were the big problem. Take a look at these floors. Yeah, typical Michigan rust, man, old rotten floors. Now, Aaron replaced his own floors. Here's a shot of the floors that he put in. Aaron, man, those look good. The welds look good. Everything looks straight. <laughs> That's a good job. All right. Now, obviously, he still has a lot to do with the car. He's got to do the brakes, rebuild the carbs, install the exhaust, do the audio, and paint it, and it'll be done. Aaron, great job, man. You're going to have a killer car when it's done. I'm so glad you're doing a Corvair, man. Not many people do those. Now, the rest of you guys, I know you're working on something, man. Send some pictures into the GearsTV.com website. Let us know what you're working on. We'll see if we can get it on the air. Also, when you're checking out the website, make sure you check out all the new GearHead gear. It makes great gifts for you or somebody else. All right, that does it for us today. I'm going to take this Challenger out and drive it, and you need to get out and work on something.